Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm back again with uh, another uh, video, as promised. And um, uh, I think you all would remember that when I finished the previous video, I said I'll be coming back with a video on uh, English uh, language speaking in India, the trends and the challenges uh, therein. So before I proceed further, let me welcome you to Eloquent English Enterprise. It's a pleasure to be back, to be talking to you. And uh, this is also a topic which uh, I recently took up in uh, one of my workshops. And I'm glad that the response was very, very positive. So I thought that I'll be sharing uh, whatever I shared with uh, the audience uh, in the workshop. I'm going to share the same with you. So let's just start off with the presentation. So here we are. Okay. So here we are with uh, our topic. And this is English language teaching in India, trends and challenges, right? Um, though, I mean, we all know that English language teaching has been there in our country since a long, long time. But how did it start? What are the current trends and what are the challenges which our teachers are facing nowadays? And uh, since it's going to be a long video, I'm going to record it in two parts. So um, let's start off with the first part. Okay. Okay. So English language teaching in India, emerging trends and overcoming challenges. So here goes. English language teaching has been a necessity in Indian schools, we all know, because most of the schools today, they are English medium schools. And in this presentation, I'm going to uh, outline the current trends and challenges in this transformative process. So uh, at the onset, let me just say that uh, English was not prevalent in our country before the advent of the East India Company. That is, when the British came to India, it's only then that the seed was sown. Prior to that, uh, it was the regional languages which were used to communicate and to teach the children in schools, whatever schools they were. So it was only after the British came to India and they established themselves nicely and properly that uh, English had to be taken up by the Indians uh, because... Uh, I mean, we'll just see in the forthcoming slides that how did the transformation take place? So let's go to the next slide. Okay, in this particular one, like uh, these are the topics which I'm going to uh, consider, the subtopics in this particular video. So in the first half, I'm going to take the history of ELT, that is English language teaching in India. Second point would be its importance and relevance. Third would be the advantages of English as second language, then effective implementation of the ELT, advantages of ELT and its effects on the future education system. The rest of the topics, the challenges, the role of the government in uh, the ELT in rural areas and employability and the future of ELT in India, all this is going to be dealt with in the second part of this video, okay? So what's the history of English language teaching in India? Let's consider this. The early colonial period, that is when the British came to our country, uh, they could not communicate with the Indians because we would speak Hindi or whatever was the regional language. Uh, in Kerala, it was um, Malayalam, uh, in uh, Andhra Pradesh, I mean, erstwhile, whatever the... the uh, kingship would have been at that particular time. So uh, there was Kannada, there was uh, Telugu, there was Tamil uh, in the south. And when they came towards the north, then it was Hindi, Bengali, all that. So in the early colonial period, what they did was that they tried to teach English to those few Indians 
with whom they were coming in close contact with. That is the people who were working for them because they had to communicate, they had to give directions, they had to give orders. So a few people whom they had selected to work for them, they were taught English. Then came Macaulay's minute in the year 1835 and he said that the medium of instruction in Indian schools should also be English. Right, so it was forced upon our children and uh, the medium of instruction suddenly from the regional language, it changed into English. Then they started establishing English medium schools because they wanted their culture to prevail here. And the only way to do this is to cut the roots of the traditions and culture of the country that they had. Uh, you know, they had got into. So they started establishing English medium schools. After that, there was a stiff resistance because people did not want to give up their own language. So there was a kind of, you know, a tussle which went on. But as we know, we had to give in. So our own languages became the second language and English became the prominent one, the prime language. Uh, after that, since this transformation had already begun. So after the schools came the turn of universities and colleges and higher education. And so uh, some universities were established like the Kolkata University. And then after that, there was a series of universities that were established and they made use of the English language as their uh, first language or medium of instruction. Then came the Vernacular Press Act in 1878. And here also, I mean, English was given prominence and the, the regional languages, they were put to the second position. Then uh, we saw the advent of a few Indians who began to write uh, and, uh, you know, they, they, they tried to profess uh, English language. And those were, you know, uh, people like Rabindranath Tagore, Mulkraj Anand. So these were the early writers in English, Indian writers in English language. After independence and post-independence era, since we had to compete with the world, now we became a platform where children were going out and there was a lot of uh, cultural exchange that was taking place. So after the independence, uh, a lot of English came into our country. So lots of schools were established, which were English medium schools. And whatever education system was being carried on by the English, we continued with that. So there were a lot of changes that were required and were made, but the prime focus was on English as the main medium of instruction. Um, we all are very aware of the fact that English is the most common language which is spoken uh, worldwide. So uh, obviously, I mean, if our children have to go out or the other people come to our country, uh, the only language in which we can communicate right now is English. So English plays a very big role in, uh, you know, making our children go out into the world and work in other countries. So it's helped in globalization. Uh, now the language policy is being changed uh, in the curriculum with the coming of the new curricular framework. Um, English is considered important and we, we try to teach in uh, the English language, but now uh, our own languages, our own Indian languages are being given a lot of impetus. So, even at the secondary, the senior secondary stage, the students are going to take, or they'll be, uh, I mean, they'll be made to take up at least one Indian language in their course. The second language could be either Indian or foreign, but one language has to be Indian. Now, the importance of English language teaching in Indian education, global communication, we know that, I mean, if our children go out, if our students go out somewhere, they will not be able to converse in any of our languages unless they have their own society over there. So English is the common language. It gives you a platform to communicate with the world. 
Um, also, now since we make excessive use or extensive use of the internet, most of the information which is available on the net is in English. Yes, there are other languages also, but the most common one, uh, the most popular one is English. Employability. Today, since uh, most of our offices or whatever, uh, you know, we have, uh, uh, whether it's a medical uh, college or an institution, uh, they want their uh, recruits to be fluent in English. So um, there are a lot of uh, IELTS institutions which have mushroomed in uh, most of the uh, cities because we feel that to know English gives you a little high towards employability. Your chances become better for employment. So uh, that is another uh, importance, uh, you can say an important factor uh, that we can uh, give to English language. And why is it necessary to teach English language in our schools? For higher education, most of our students, they prefer going out to universities like, like Oxford, and there are so many more. And uh, so uh, over there, I mean, but obviously and but naturally, uh, the instruction would be in English. So if our children, if our students are not aware of the technicalities or they are not good uh, uh, as per the, uh, you know, the worldwide uh, uh, standards of English are concerned, which is CEFR. I'm going to discuss that later. So they won't be able to complete, compete globally. Cultural exchange also takes place because there is a, a common platform. And over here, a lot of cultural exchange can take place only because the two parties can communicate in the English language. Okay, now the relevance of English language teaching in the Indian context, okay? So diversity. Now we know that um, children or students uh, in our classes, they come from diverse backgrounds. Somebody could be a Bengali, somebody could be a Gujarati, another one could be an Andhraite or a Keralite, or somebody could be from Jammu Kashmir or a Machar Pradesh. So in a class, when there are so many people coming from so many different places, you do need a common language to address each other. So this role is being played by English, and that is why it's still important. You know, people have this, uh, though it is not a very healthy uh, kind of a sign, but nobody wants to give up their uh, regional language. And why should they? Because we are all proud of our uh, mother tongue. Uh, but uh, when, uh, you know, uh, we have a little hitch in learning the other uh, regional language, because there are so many of them. English being just one language, which is common, not just in India, but outside in the world, uh, people feel it's it's more comfortable, it's easier to communicate in English. So even though we are diversified or we have a lot of diversity in our setup, English generally uh, you know, tends to bring us all together. Global opportunities, I've already mentioned, that if we are good at English or if we teach our children uh, and make them well-versed in English, they have better opportunities to go out and work in the world. Education per se, because, uh, you know, in, in any country, uh, you need a common uh, language for communication. So education also needs some language which everyone can follow. And so for higher education or for junior education, a primary or secondary or senior secondary, we need English as the medium of instruction. In the job market, again, though... Uh, we may say that why not promote our own mother tongue, but the fact is that uh, all recruiters generally look for uh, people who can speak and write English very fluently. Competitive exams, again, are mostly conducted in the English language. Uh, the advantages of English language teaching and this in the context of our own country uh, we have improved learning outcomes. Like if you have uh, English language teaching, uh, it enhances the academic performance and improves the overall quality of education. The academic performance of children is uh, generally gets improved because uh, again, it's a common platform. 
it boosts self confidence uh, however much we may try to evade this but yes it's a fact that if you are fluent in english it it boosts your confidence level you may be very good at hindi but you know uh, <laughs> it's it sounds uh, i mean not a very welcome thing but yes Uh, if a person is not able to speak in english they they lose their confidence i mean it's it's the kind of trend that we've set in our society so uh, if a person knows how to speak english fluently it gives them a sense of uh, uh, confidence independence and prepares them for the dynamic world to even today i get a lot of calls from teachers that you know we feel very uh, nervous when we are taking classes because we are not very sure whether we are speaking correct english or not equal opportunities uh, you get because again if you uh, can master a certain language which is the common platform today then uh, wherever uh, like whichever region you may be from wherever you may be coming from whatever geographical region uh, to access higher education and for employment and your skill development opportunities you need to have a good knowledge of english so again as i mentioned the internet also gives you most of the information in english so uh, the people who speak english who write english or who can communicate well in this language they have access to a lot of information which is international including uh, research entertainment sports news uh, literature and so many more things and yes you get an edge above the rest you become globally competitive uh, you can uh, just go out and take on the world with a lot of confidence because you know you are proficient in the language or in the english language which forms a common pl platform uh, all over the world how to go about teaching english in india right now this is that um, uh a, a few points which i have tried to uh, incorporate over here firstly which is most important we need to have qualified teachers still today in most of the schools all over our country we have english teachers who themselves make a lot of grammatical errors who themselves are not fluent who make no, uh, mistakes not just uh, grammatically or in their grammar but also in pronunciation and spellings and you know when the teacher standard is not good enough what do you expect the children to learn from so the greatest need today is to have well qualified teachers who at least can teach in correct english right curriculum curriculum development should be done in such a way and this only the government can do not me not you or anybody but the curriculum development sh should be such that it enhances the correct teaching methodology in schools uh, this we'll have to go into a lot of detail so i think over here just this much would suffice use of technology we require because uh, you know if you just have lecture method in class and ch children generally uh, start feeling bored and uh, they do not want to study so today with the advent of technology with the use of online classes with so with so many uh, teaching tools that have come up uh, and there are so many varied ways in which a language can be taught uh, i think uh, english teaching has become more interesting and more entertaining and more uh, i mean it it uh, attracts children uh, towards their lessons because now they can see they can do it has become more interactive all thanks to technology now language labs are something which is very important and we uh, in india we generally underestimate them what exactly is a language lab now here there are a lot of uh, machines which have been put up uh, in the form of uh, very good mics and headphones uh, where a child is made to listen through the headphones and uh, here he or she can listen to how a certain thing is spoken the expression uh, the pronunciation and um, where the breaks are to be taken where a pause is to be taken and accordingly then they 
once they've heard it nicely, they record it in their own voice. And then they get to hear what they have spoken and whether it is it matches what was initially given to them or they still have to make improvement. So language labs go a long way in making children learn how to speak English in the correct manner. The intonation, the expression, the pronunciation, the pauses, all these things are very important when you speak. Uh, we also promote language immersion. Uh, here, um, you know, language immersion uh, generally means that uh, a lot of things that can be uh, integrated into uh, your English teaching. So uh, teachers have to be uh, aware of how and when to use a certain technology and uh, how to sometimes even use other languages just to enhance your teaching in class of a particular concept. The methodologies involved, communicative language teaching, that is a lot of interaction is to be done. We create an atmosphere in the class where everybody gets an equal chance to share their views. So that is communicative language and that's the most important one because ultimately a language is to communicate. Grammar translation method is not a very favorable way of doing it because uh, at times literal translations are not really very good or apt. Uh, for example, like if I have to say, uh, you know, if in Hindi we say, ki, ab pata chalega ki kaun kitne pani mein hai. But if you translate it to English, now we'll get to know in how much of water you stand. So it doesn't really make sense. I mean, it sounds absurd. Task-based language teaching is good. I mean, you give a certain situation, you give a task to children and let them do it. Okay. Uh, for example, you tell them that, here. Yeah, okay, this is how we make a sandwich. So now uh, tell us the ways, how to go about it. So children will have to speak short statements, but they have to be in a logical sequence. Uh, it doesn't require too much of a flowery language, simple statements initially and then and short statements and then slowly the length can be increased. So it could be task based, it could be situation based also. Audiovisual and multimedia learning is a great uh, technique which has come up in English language teaching. Lots of publishers are now uh, preparing audiovisual books. So it's not just that the child gets to read a portion uh, on his own or her own. Uh, we have talking books. Like um, when you get the soft copy version of the book, the child can or the student can just uh, put the uh, recording on and then somebody or that, uh, you know, that, that voice reads a particular story. So the child gets to hear how a certain language, uh, a certain lesson, sorry, has to be read out. And similarly, a lot of visuals are also projected for them on the screen. Language games and interactive activities go a very long way in establishing the correct usage of the language in uh, school, in classes. Uh, the more the children speak, you know, anything comes with practice. Uh, as we say, uh, that practice makes a person uh, perfect. Yeah, I mean, we can't say that anybody is perfect, but yes, we can always try and go in for perfection. So language games where children themselves come out to play and they have a lot of interactive activities, obviously English uh, teaching and learning becomes a more uh, entertaining and a more welcome kind of a process. And... Uh, the advantages, we've already spoken about it uh, earlier. What are the advantages of teaching English as a second language, as a second language in India? Enhanced employability, you become uh, a better candidate to be uh, selected. You get access to global information. This is a repetition. And you have improved communication and you become globally competitive. So... Uh, uh, this is uh, like the last slide now, like what are the effects on the future of Indian education? That is uh, English language teaching. What are the effects of uh, ELT on the future of Indian 
education. Firstly, we'll have an improved quality of people because they would be uh, working on the same platform. It won't be like, you know, in Hindi we say, uh, uh, too many cooks spoil the broth is what we speak in English. I mean, uh, that's one quotation which suddenly occurred to me. So um, if we have people who can speak the same language and they can communicate in that, obviously the quality of the end product is going to be better. We have more inclusivity. Lots and lots of people can be included in a certain task. Uh, so uh, because they can all communicate properly. There are increased opportunities in various ways, uh, whether it's employability or it's kind of, you know, competing in India or outside. So your opportunities to study and to work, they increase. And in the global perspective, we become a global citizen. We are not just confined to the regional boundaries of our own country, but uh, we can go out and conquer the world with as much confidence as possible. So now the challenges I'm going to include in the second half of this uh, presentation, or I'll make a second video. So for the time being, um, I'm going to... Uh, end up over here. So till I get back again, this is what uh, you can probably uh, see in the recording. You can repeat it again. And um, I'll be back <laughs> at the earliest. I won't keep you waiting. So uh, good night, everyone. And uh, please do suggest because, uh, you know, uh, the new topics, because uh, the, the teachers that I met recently, they said that, and I'm very glad they said this, that uh, they'll get back to me with uh, the topics that they would want me to make the videos on. So thank you, teachers. It was wonderful meeting you and hoping to see you soon. So have a wonderful uh, Wednesday tomorrow. I'm a little uh, not aware of what day is today. So uh, for me, it's night of 8th of November. So wishing you a happy 9th and see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. And thank you so much for being on Eloquent English Enterprise. Bye-bye.